everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Fiddle. I am an artist, a crafter, and a miniaturist that likes to teach others that they can be creative too. Link to scavenger hunt, patterns, and materials is listed in the description box below. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. It really helps me out a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Today I will be showing you how to make this miniature wood dish rack. I started with chopsticks and glued them together as the back piece for the dish rack. I thought with the vertical and horizontal lines through it, it would give it kind of a checkered pattern. It worked, but it didn't at the same time. I actually goofed and ended up having to make two of these. The first one, I couldn't decide on the colors that I wanted to paint it, so I was going to wait until the very end. So I put the whole thing together and then realized, oh gee, I can't get to all the spots to paint it. <laughs> and it looked good too. I'll put a picture up of it, but it didn't work because I didn't paint it beforehand. So that's why we are starting with sanding and painting first because if you want to paint your back piece you need to do it before you put it together. Lesson learned. Anyways, I borrowed some paint from my daughter and I started with a blue color and I knew that I wanted to give it the painting technique that I did the hutch which is where you lay some color down and then you sand a good bit of it off leaving the paint not so nice and neat and crisp. I think I have completely abandoned the whole idea of going steampunk for like some sort of country cottage boho type house, I think. It's definitely not steampunk anymore. I guess we'll just have to see in the end. Okay, once your back piece is painted and sanded, go ahead and grab your fancy ended toothpicks. I think on the pattern, I have 20 intersection points for you to put toothpicks, I think, but I believe that I put 26 for mine. First I laid down blue and sanded it with a fingernail file until I got a good bit off and then I did red on the very end. Next, give everything a good wash of a watered down brown color. Basically anywhere that I was leaving wood or was left wood was going to be getting a coat of this. Just lay a thin layer down and then let it sit for a minute or two and then wipe it off with a dry towel.
Using your pattern, mark out all the intersecting lines. I ended up doing this before and after painting to both of the shelf pieces. I had to go over mine with a paint pen because my wood was still wet when I was doing this. I thought I had waited long enough, but apparently not. Next, cut your toothpicks into one and a half inch lengths. Now is when patience comes into play. So take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, now we are going to start by gluing our little toothpicks to the board. I did try laying it on its side and using like a spacer block to hold the pegs up while they dried. It didn't work like I thought it would, so I reverted back to just holding them up until the glue dried enough for them to be stable, so I can make sure that they were standing straight. Or if you have like some sort of agent that speeds the drying process along, other than baking soda. I didn't use baking soda on this one because it builds up and hardens so that build up you would have to sand down and with these just being toothpicks they're a little too fragile for serious sanding that you would have to do to knock that back. One row down. Let it dry completely before you move on to the next step. Not all of my toothpicks are the same height, so in some places there is a little bit of a gap where they don't reach completely across. More on that later, but first we need to glue the top to the bottom piece. This will help us stabilize the next row of toothpicks we put in. Set it aside for drying time, and when we come back, we're going to work on the second row. To get them in place, I used super glue and another toothpick to make sure they were straight in the middle. So you need something skinny enough and long enough that can reach down in there to make sure they're going straight across.
Once you have them all in place, go back over them with just a dot of super glue. Even on the ones that don't go all the way across, go ahead and add a dab of super glue to them too, because gravity might help it a little bit and pull it down towards the wood and give you a base for the next part. And let it dry for a minute. To fill in the gap, I used regular white tacky glue and turned it upside down so gravity would pull the glue to the other side and hopefully fill in the gap for most of them which that did work and there really wasn't that build up like I had mentioned before if I would have used the super glue and baking soda. At this point I graduated from using a toothpick to do this to a little clay tool that actually helped out a lot more than the toothpick did but what you want to do is you want to stick glue in the gap in between and then later on we're going to take another type of clay tool and scrape the glue away that is on the shelf piece itself. Now we can put our pieces together. I used white tacky glue. You'll want the back piece sticking up above your first shelf about a half an inch and that should leave your bottom shelf with about an inch. Now we're going to grab some wood beads and paint them in our choice of colors. I went with red and blue to keep that same color theme going. I have a piece of fabric that was originally a shirt that's got this red, blue colors in it along with tan and these are kind of the colors that I've based my kitchen around. I also used it to make two skirts for my doll along with the dish rag that I hung on the sink. Altogether I painted eight oblong beads and four round beads and gave them the same treatment as we have everything else where we put some paint down and then sand a good bit of it off. The main thing is, is that they all fit in between your two shelves to make it look like they're supports. And the top two little red ones are for decoration purposes. And while those are drying, we're going to move on to making the cup pegs. I started by painting the fancy end of the toothpicks red. You'll need about five of them. Then glue them to the backboard in a zigzag pattern. I started at the center and worked my way out. I believe the first ones are an inch and then the last two on each side is about a half an inch.
At this point I liked it, but I needed to add a little bit more color. I needed to pull some of the green from the hutch into the dish rack. So I mixed up a color of almost like a sea foam pale green and just did the edge all the way around of both shelves. And then gave it the sanding treatment. Looking at it now, I think I should have painted the underneath side where the cup pegs are, but that's okay. I think it turned out really good. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to see more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. I'll see you next time.